So about a week ago, I reviewed the Acer Swift 3, but it was the Intel model. And the Intel model of the Swift 3 happens to be more expensive at $1,100. It's Acer's more premium version of the laptop. There also happens to be a cheaper version which retails for $680. The big difference being that it houses an AMD CPU. Now, whether you go with Intel or AMD, the look and feel are very similar. It's using a metal alloy, which is super thin aluminum that pretty Pretty much feels like plastic, but it's not. And it's super light, 2.7 pounds, making this very easy to carry. On the left-hand side, you have your HDMI port, USB 3.0, USB Type-C, and the only difference being that the Intel model gives you a Thunderbolt 3 port. From a design standpoint, you do have this nice curved edge with the AMD model, whereas the Intel version is just more of your traditional style. On the other side, you have a, another USB port, audio jack, and of course, a noble lock. Now, the display is one area that differs between these laptops. Like if you go with the AMD model, you're basically sticking with 16 by nine. This is more of a traditional type of display that we're used to. Fantastic for watching movies, but not the best for productivity. I'd prefer 16 by 10 or even three by two. This is a matte display, so it doesn't showcase reflections. So it's great outdoors, but it's not a great display. This is one area they had to cut in order to reduce the price. Like you don't wanna be using this monitor or display to do content creation on, whether you're using Photoshop or any sort of design work. The color accuracy is just not that great. Same with the brightness. I do have to say though, if you do go with the Intel model, it does have PDM, PDM, PWM flickering. The only way to get rid of it is to increase the brightness to 100%. So if you're very sensitive to that, you might want to avoid this laptop, period. The keyboards on both laptops are identical. They both have good travel distance. They feel the same. They're a bit squishy, but they don't affect typing. I was able to type fast on both keyboards. The only thing I truly don't like is the placement of the page up, page down key, how it's crammed together with the arrow keys. It's very annoying to access. Touchpad is the same in terms of its materials. They're both plastic. They both use Windows Precision drivers and both have the same sort of accuracy when you're moving around the cursor. The only difference is that the Intel model gets a bigger trackpad because the depth of the laptop is longer and that's due to that more vertical three by two aspect ratio. Now there's one area I truly wanna talk about I'm super passionate about and, and, and it's huge and it's sticker placement because right now there's a major sticker war going on between Intel and AMD. Intel's coming out swinging with three stickers, whereas AMD is sticking to a two sticker approach. Internally, not much is upgradable except for the M2 NVMe drive, which by the way, is faster on the more affordable option. RAM is soldered onto the motherboard so you can't upgrade it. You do have a smaller battery in the AMD version. This one is about 48 watt hours, but this is only using a 1080p display. And I was getting about 11 hours and 15 minutes before needing to charge. Both laptops have Wi-Fi 6 and both laptops are super easy to get inside. Speakers sound better on the more affordable option. Maybe it's because there's a little slit here, so the sound has more area to penetrate outwards compared to where as the Intel model, they're stuck at the bottom front and sound quieter at max volume compared to the AMD version. Interesting. So performance is where the AMD model completely shines. Like this $680 laptop with the 4700U almost doubles the performance of the 10th gen i7 Intel processor inside of here. And if you do something like compiling code and you're a developer, you're gonna see almost double the performance on the AMD model. The eight cores in here are just much better suited than the four cores that are inside of the Intel variant. Even when it comes to graphics, the integrated Vega 8 outperforms the Iris Plus in the Intel model. If you're doing Photoshop, both laptops are fine, but Intel does have the advantage with Premiere Pro, just because Adobe has optimized its software to work better with QuickSync and the integrated GPU. Now, I imagine most people are not buying this for Premiere Pro, but if you're 
you're that one individual, that's the difference. Fan noise is quiet. Both of these laptops run under 40 decibels, prioritizing fan noise over everything else. No matter how hard you push these laptops, they don't overheat and they don't thermal throttle. They just power limit in order to keep the CPUs cool and the fan noise low. So here's the bottom line. The Intel model grants you Thunderbolt 3, a three by two aspect ratio with a higher res display, but you have to put up with PWM flicker and you get slightly better battery life. Whereas the AMD model doesn't have PWM flicker, gives you faster SSD speeds and significantly better performance. I think for $400 less, most people are better off going with the AMD version of the Acer Swift 3. I just don't think the value's there for $1,100 on the Intel model. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Would you go with Intel or AMD? Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.